click within the presentation and Got then it. use arrows to go back. All right. All right, everybody, what's going on? Welcome everybody. We got both of the, both the live people here in live. I uh, want to thank Boomers Tackle big time. We're at Grandview Lodge. Uh, Boomers Tackle set it all up for us to have uh, all you guys here live. We really appreciate it. And of course, we got a whole bunches of people on online right now. I'm Josh Douglas, FLW Tour Pro. My Seth homie Seth Fighter, Fast Master Elite. Thank you for joining on. We got a lot of good prizes, a lot of stuff to get through. Today, we're going to talk about our top five bass and baits and presentations and when and where we like to use those. We're going to go back and forth. What are we starting with, largies? I think so. Largies. Top five largemouth setups. Um, we're going to break it down right away, uh, save any questions you have. Guys, we're going to answer all the online stuff first because they can't hear when you ask us questions and what's going on. Once we shut off here, we'll go and answer any questions we have here. All right? Let's rock it. Top five uh, largey setups. Let's see one first. Uh, for me, uh, a swim jig. This is an outcast swim jig, especially a white one. Um, a lot of the places we travel down south, pretty much all the fish are mostly focused on shad. And that dude right there has got me through a lot of miserable practices. I've had a lot of good tournaments down south. Uh, you know, top 20, top 30 tournaments where I've been on literally absolutely nothing. And that thing saved my butt multiple times in places I should have bombed. But um fish on a seven foot medium heavy i do braid to a leader and uh it's just something i can cover a ton of different cover with uh burn bank um it excels really well around floating docks uh i love fishing docks growing up in minnesota we got a bunch of them but all ours are shallowed with posts and it's usually a flipping thing or a sanko deal but then you go down south and all the docks are floating over you know 10 to 50 feet of water so the fish really relate to them a lot different they sit you know, high in the water column underneath the floats. Um, like I said, shad spawn works real well for, but uh, I love it around floating docks and uh, anytime the water's in the bushes, stuff like that. Um, real good pre-spawn, post-spawn bait. Anytime in the spring, really, it's a killer bait. But, uh, and then in these like top five deals we're doing, it's, I mean, this comes down as a confidence stuff. Everything we're going through on these are going to be like, major confidence baits for us that we can you know take anywhere and catch fish and i do throw this a lot up home too around minnesota usually it's a you know yeah. bluegill colored version of it uh but that white one down south it just i mean it gets bit there's no doubt about it it really does and there i mean it's a confidence bait a lot of our when we sat down and we talked about what our top five i think our we probably fired five out of six right away we had the same thing so we have to like Switch it around. So Seth took one. I take one. We went back and forth, kind of paper, rock, scissors, which ones we got. A swim jig's killer. Um, yeah. I definitely use it up here a lot, even from fishing weed lines, around docks, up in rice, anything. A uh, uh, swim jig is uh, definitely the way to go. And there's two of them. We use the Outcast Tackle. Uh, the Pro Swim Jig's real good fluorocarbon jig, straight fluorocarbon, throwing weed lines, stuff like that. And then the heavy cover is the juice for getting up in that thick stuff. Yeah. I do like a little bit of watercolor with a swim jig too. Mm -hmm. I don't want it gin gin clear. But talk about just moving water on a lake you don't know. It's a confidence bait. It'll get bit every single time. Yeah. And you can still you see a you see a log, you can flip the log <laughs> real quick with it too. You know, it's it's just a versatile bait. Uh I am up on a chatter bait. Chatter bait is uh definitely catches big fish. Um generally known as a springtime cold, cold water deal, uh gr around grass, stuff like that. But I think you can catch them on it year round. Uh, Chatterbait, you can move a lot of water with it. I'm using a Shimano X Pride. Uh, it's actually a glass rod. I, I despise glass rods. I've never really gotten around them, but this one's different. It's like 60% uh, composite material, 40% glass. So the top of it allows me to really load up on the fish. I can yo-yo it and stuff like Hydrilla uh, down south. Places that I would probably, a lot of people throw a rattle trap. A lot of times I like to give them the chatterbait. I'm um, throwing it on a Shimano Corrado 200K. I like to throw it on a little bit on like a six speed reel when I'm throwing stuff like this. Uh, not such a high, something I can really get myself to slow down on. Um, I use a jackhammer chatterbait. I think it's the best one that they make. I don't have any ties to the company at all. I just, man, it costs a lot of money, but it's the best chatterbait on the market that I that I know of. It's got the best hook, best components, best colors. And on the back, I'm using a Biospawn Biocron. Something we probably should have said on the swim jig too. You might want to switch that trailer up a little yeah. bit. 
uh, sometimes when, when would you use like a swim bait trailer as opposed to a craw trailer? Uh, uh, usually in colder in weather. Uh, when I'm fishing with a swim bait trailer, it's more of a steady retrieve. And with the craw trailer, I'm, you know, more Alabama style yeah. popping it. And I also like to, uh, if I'm around big fish, sometimes I'll give them that bigger swim bait, some, just a little bit bigger profile. Uh, and then I'm using 17 pound Seeger and Vizex. To me, I think that's the best size. 20 can work too, but uh, 17 works real good. Straight 17 fluorocarbon, a uh, good strong reel in the Corrado and the X-Pride, like I said, loads them up and keeps them pegged when they eat the bait for sure. Oh, there, two. There it is. Yeah, this, this is probably my favorite soft plastic to flip. Uh, it's an old school tube, just a, I think it's a three and a half, four inch green pumpkin tube. Um, I've caught them everywhere I've went in the country on that. And I think it's really been forgotten about. A lot of guys don't fish it anymore ever since like beavers and, uh, you know, those style baits, ski bombs, bombs like that, those yeah. kind of baits became real popular. Everybody kind of gave up on the tube. Uh, fishing this on a seven foot medium heavy braid to a leader again. Um, it's a bait that I've just been able to, it just gets bit everywhere I go again, back to that confidence thing um it definitely shines like more around the spring anytime those fish start pulling up pre-spawn spawn post it's really good in the post spawn too and those fish are funky and um kind of hard to catch as well as it especially if there's like any sort of spawn going on i love flipping this just because you might be blind catching bed fish or you know i can put it anywhere i can fish it on docks i can fish it on wood i can just flip it down the bank it doesn't matter um gets a ton of bites and it, it's something i don't see anybody throw anymore you know everybody's creature bait or a jig and um tube just it gets a lot of bites really good reaction bite and it's got a little different fall it's a lot more erratic than everything else you flip everything else kind of just falls straight and that's got a got a little trigger to it so um you know at grand lake i finished fifth this year i caught i think almost every single fish i weighed that tournament just flipping a tube um I flipped it at Chatug. I mean, I've got fish year round, north to south on it. Uh, Killer on flat, rivers. I guess. Yeah. Good river bait too. Cut, cut banks, stuff like that. It comes through everything. A tube just goes in, everything comes out. Let's talk about your hook real quick. Talk about like a hook oh, style yeah. though, because that that is one thing. Yeah, you definitely got to fish these on an extra wide gap. Um, you'll have issues hooking them on a, you know, a regular straight shank or they stab uh, right through it too. They're hollow. Yeah, and. Uh, this one this is a vmc hook it's a ringed hook i don't know if you can see that on there or not it's pretty small but uh comes with a stainless steel ring on the top of it gives it a little bit extra action and it's always streamlined when it's falling it's never a lot of times when you skip a bait or pitch up under the wood your knot will get pulled to the side when you're pegging a texas rig sink around there um that ring kind of prevents all that from happening it always keeps it streamlined and seems to get really good hookups keeps them and, on doesn't let them get away from it Another thing, I will fish a tube a little bit lighter than I flip everything else, like a three-ace, well, with the exception of like punching stuff. If I'm just fishing open cover, three-ace is about the heaviest I'll flip on a tube. Usually it's a quarter, um, whereas, you know, if I was flipping a beaver in that same situation, it might be three-ace or halves, or if it was a jig, it might be half or three-quarter, but I tend to fish them a little bit lighter than most stuff I flip. The tube can be kind of heavy, too, on its own. It's like a perfect, it's like a perfect way to do it. Great yeah, under docks too when they're on Texas rigs. Uh, things the tubes just get bit since the very beginning. They get yeah. Bit. What do I got? Uh, the big swimmer. Uh, I'm kind of a little bit. I, I love. I like swim baits just in general, but I love a big paddle tail swim bait. Uh, I use this one in particular. I've used it a lot from uh, the Tennessee River up here on rock piles on like even Lake Minnetonka. Big bass eat bigger baits than what we think that they eat, and they definitely cue in on it. That's, this one's a rising sun. Uh, there's a lot of paddle tails that I like. At Kentucky Lake this year, I took third. This got me a key bite every single day um, of the tournament. It, it should have had my personal best smallie even. It was the longest smallmouth I think I've ever caught in my entire life, but those they worked their butts off, so they're not nearly as fat and round as ours are on Mille Lacs. So I did not get that honor, but uh, the bait just gets bit. I'm um, throwing it on a Shimano X Pride again. This is this this is a, a very very sweet rod. It's a seven foot seven inches heavy, but a real moderate action parabolic. I can throw any kind of a uh, swim bait from like a Shadalicious style with a like a bigger jig head to anything on it. Works great. Again, I'm using a Shimano Corrado. I definitely like the uh, 
six feet on that again because I want to keep it down, keep it really slow, let that thing just waddle around like a war pig down there, and it just it, it just cues in on big baits. And again, when you have a bait that big, I'm using a treble hook on it. I run trebles through a, as many of these baits I can. You got to get them weighted, but the key is that's a lot of plastic for a bass to get in their mouth. So if you just have one hook in it, um, it's hard for them. You, you just lose them too much. Where on this style with the with the line through, when they bite it, you get that good hook up and that that moderate action rod kind of lets the fish load on it and when they pull it away the plastic flies up the line and now they just have a treble hook in their mouth and they just cannot get it they can't get it out of their mouth my landing percentage went up big time uh can come through anything you can get these rising suns and top hook bottom hook whatever it is if you want to keep it on the bottom or you want to keep it up high in the water column um awesome bait largies love it uh small malls will probably break your heart they'll probably follow it and hit it a lot but hookup is going to be terrible on them. And I'm using an owner STX 3X plus. It's It's got that Zoll wire. I'm a big, big fan of that, them kind of hooks. Any, there's a bunch of them out there. They got like that, I don't know what you would call it, um, over the over coating over the top of them, but they peg them. They don't bend out. You're going to break it before you're going to bend it. Uh, good hooks. Again, I, I can't barely ever tie these things up without making myself bleed just because they're they're that sharp. So uh, 20 pounds, Seeger and Vizix line, something big, something I can handle big fish on. Uh, again, a big swim bait definitely has its place. And now proving that they have their place in tournament fishing, guys are catching a lot of fish, even up in northern waters. Um, you know, our, our buddy Carl Jockinson at, at Champlain caught like a six and a five on his last three casts using a big swim bait. So that that's no different than fishing our water here. That big fish queuing on big baits, and uh, you got to give it to them. And you'll still catch plenty of fish oh. on a bait that, like a two pounder, is no problem no, getting that bait. They eat with them all the time. Anyways, they eat them so. all the time. They're not running around eating bluegills like this all the time. They they eat bigger stuff, especially right now. All right, frog for me. Uh, I think we actually both have this in our top five. Hard not to though. Um, you know, anytime after the fish have gotten shallow all summer long, frog's a great way to fish. For largemouths, you can throw it in anything, comes out, no problem. It's a Terminator walking frog. Uh, I got this on a 7-1 heavy, 40-pound braid. I don't know if I mentioned this, all, all the other setups before, 8 to 1. That's pretty much all I use for anything that's not winding. Uh, I just like picking up the slack faster and whatnot. But a uh, uh, frog catches, it'll catch a lot of fish and it'll catch big fish too. It's probably... You know, one of the best ways to fish really heavy cover. Um, but I, I'll fish mine in open water a lot too, just going down the bank. You can skip it under docks, overhanging trees, uh, places you, know, you can't put a top water bait. Yeah, anywhere without, you know, not having all the trebles, hooks hanging out and stuff. You can stick that in tight stuff, pull it out, and uh, gets a ton of bites. And it catches big fish too. You know, a lot of tournaments get one on a frog, especially when fish are really shallow. Anytime it's hard to catch fish flipping and a true foot of water you know a lot of people think they look and say it's a foot but sometimes it's two but when fish get truly shallow this shallow um top water is by far the best way to catch them they don't spook near as bad hard to get your boat by them too yeah you and you can throw that a long ways where flipping realistically you're gonna want those fish in at least two feet of water or more to catch them flipping so anytime fish get super shallow uh fry garters is probably one of the best fry garter baits there is um, like I said, you can fish them in open water and super heavy cover. It's just something I can put in my hands and burn down a bank and fish everything in front of me. I'm sure uh, I'm not the only one. Why don't you tell me what your modification on that frog you got rocking there? Uh, Keep our eye yeah, on that one pretty yeah. good. Next on to the one. next one. <laughs> on the next one. <laughs> All right, drop shot. Uh, drop shot's killer. We'll talk about it with smallies. We're going to talk about it about largemouth. Um, this drop shot catches a bunch of fish this is one of the setups i was again using at kentucky lake uh there's just a drop shot catches fish everywhere it catches big fish catches small fish uh, i'm using a g loomis nrx you'll kind of see i'm a little bit snobby when i come to my spinning rod and reel combos um i'm from minnesota like i always say i think we're born with hockey skates on our feet and spinning rods in our hand uh this the nrx is in my opinion one of the finest uh, spinning rods made. It's hard to get away from it. Um, I use 10 pound Power Pro SSB2. This is a new line that's coming out in like January. Uh, everyone knows Power Pro. They've been along around, long around, uh, been around a long time. 
Uh, the SSV2 is more of your finesse, like spinning reel stuff and flipping and pitching, not necessarily casting. It's a real kind of limp line, um, real quiet. You can't hear it in your guides at all. So if I'm flipping into lily pads or in this, whatever, I just can't hear it running through my guides. I think that's super important. Uh, my drop shot, one of my favorite, and there's, again, there, these are just examples when we're talking about tackle and stuff like that, but the plasma tail is a great one, a little chartreuse. Throw that on a weed line around Gull Lake. You can do it on Lake Minnetonka, basically anywhere. Throw that out on rock piles. You're definitely going to get bites. Uh, I'm using a Shimano Accents 4000 reel. I like the big reels. I think they make more sense than the 2500 sizes do. Uh, they're still light these days. They're bigger. They pick up more line faster, less line twist better drags. There's just all the way around, which is a better thing to have in your hand. And uh, again, I'm using 10 pound to 10 pound Seeger and Vizex. Uh, uh, awesome hook. I can't get enough of them. Uh, owner cover shot hook is a killer drop shot hook. Uh, it'll get them all right in the top. Doesn't flex very much on them at all. And of course the Wu Tungsten 3 Ace and Visa shot. Uh, you can't see it very good. It kind of blends in. Tungsten, I love tungsten for the drop shot. I want to feel I want to feel when it goes from rock to gravel, mud to whatever, when I come out of the grass. Again, I'm, I'm going to fish this. I'm going to fish around a lot of things. You can throw a drop shot around anything. When pressured water, even flipping wood, I've had success coming in behind people on a drop shot. Um, or we could have talked to too about like a flip shot and stuff like that, ways to maybe beef up and flip right in the foil. But when you're talking about tackling, uh, getting fishes out in those coontail, stuff like that, it is very, very hard to beat a drop shot. Yeah. For summertime, that's probably the best numbers bait as far as deep fishing goes. And you never know. It can be a pounder and a five pounder on your next bite. That just yeah. it's a it's a presentation that gets eaten. Yeah. No doubt. All right, mm. Jig, this if you gave me one bait, one rod, real bait to fish the rest of my life, this is what I'm gonna pick. Uh Salcast tackles, the tungsten jig we made, stealth fighter. Match it up. This one's has a biospawn vial bug on it, but I'll fish, you know, three, four different trailers throughout the course of the year. Um, seven foot medium heavy again, same eight to one, spray to a liter. That's how I prefer to flip. Um, this jig, we spent a lot of time getting this thing right. There's something about tungsten. It flat out will get you more bites than anything bottom contact. Like I feel like on a swim jig, it doesn't matter much because you're keeping it up, but anything that's bottom contact. Um, I feel like tungsten's going to get you a lot more bites. You know, we won't flip a lead Texas rig anymore. So tungsten made a, made a big difference. It's smaller. It's more compact. It sounds a lot different on the bottom. It's a lot harder, crisper noise. Uh, when, you know, you're dragging it through the rocks or bouncing it on the bottom, what have you, um, you got the weed guard laid on it. Perfect. This is a vertical line tied jig. Um, I love it for docks and, uh, flipping grass. I, had some good tournaments on this, almost won the Champlain tournament on that exact jig right there. Um, and I, I, if you give me one size to flip forever, it'd be the five ace. I like them a little heavier, um, get more of a reaction bite, cover more water better. Uh, we make it half and three ace. I, I don't fish the three ace at all. I'll go to a half when it does get cold. Like right now, if I was fishing, I'd be flipping a half ounce jig instead of a five ace. But you know, that's just early pre-spawn, late fall, and then. From the second they're done spawning all the way till you know after the lakes turn over i'm gonna flip that five ace on size um got a bunch of awesome colors it's a blue craw that's probably my favorite one for clear water fishing up north that's just something i can, another bait i can go down the bank and get a ton of bites with you got a super fine cut skirt on it it's just that jig just gets more bites than a traditional full-size jig will and uh awesome hook on it Pins them every time. It's just number one confidence bait for me right there is that jig. Hands down, jig. I I mean, it's my favorite bait. A jig will catch a bass every given day of the week and every single lake in the country. We almost got in a fight over who has got to present the jig that does have his name on it. So I lost. Um, Gull Lake, me and my buddy Joel just won out here in Gull Lake. That jig never left my hand. A five ace ounce a jig, that exact setup. Um, Talk about the braid to floral. That is something that a lot of people don't get on. Seth yeah. got me on that one. I use a 7.2 X, uh, X Pride rod, braid to floral. It's changed my life uh, with my hookup ratios and all that. And I yeah. think you should explain that real quick. I do it for every every single hook bait for sure. Uh, I guess with the exception of like maybe a spinner bait or something. But um, 
definitely every bottom contact bait. That's the way I fish it. I, I think the braid allows me to do so many things. I can, I used to be on a big, like eight foot heavy flipping rod kick. And if you, if you fish a ton, that will just beat you down. Your elbow hurts, your shoulder hurts. There's, I'm not that tall of a guy to be able to fish an eight foot rod. So the braid allows me to go to a seven foot medium heavy. It weighs absolutely nothing. I can fish, you know, nine months straight, not have an issue. Um, zero stretch. I like that about the braid. It's more sensitive. I get better hookups. I still got the fluorocarbon leader. So, you know, my line's invisible. And, uh, you know, there's just so many advantages to it. I mean, I don't know how many fish I've gotten just absolute terrible hook sets in. Or if I was fishing straight floral, I would 100% lost that fish. Um, and that, that jig set up with a hook where it's, it's heavy enough, you can fish it on straight braid. And it's light enough that you can fish it on straight floral. It's kind of the perfect in between. Uh, super sharp BMC hook we had custom made for that jig. Cheeks on every yeah, time. Yeah, every time. I mean, I've had them where I just wind into them and I got them, and you just don't lose any on that. And like the braid to the leader deal, I'm I'm not re-spooling my reel every night. I've got, I mean, that braid's been on there since January. I tie a new 10 foot leader on every single day with an FG. Don't got to worry about anything. And uh, like I said, the benefits of the braided line, and then matching up with a floral carbon leader it's uh, it's just in my eyes it's the only way to do it and, and a lot of guys don't like it because of having to tie the knot and all that but uh i don't know literally it seems like every tournament when i got a re-rig and i come back i'm just doing a bunch of fg knots now um the thing about it is you take spinning rods uh spinning rods you used to have to go with a stiffer spinning rod because you're using floral straight floral carbon then all of a sudden we could get away with that by going to braid to floral which rarely unless i'm throwing a spy bait i don't think i even use straight fluoro that i can think of off the top of my head it's all braided fluoro now you're starting to see it a lot with the bait casting rods you can get away with a you know one thing about it you take the old flipping stick and you're just flipping milfo now you still need those rods to get them out of thick thick vegetation matted stuff i get all that straight braid get them out of there but when it comes to actually flipping milfo or something sometimes you got eight nine feet and you that fish hits and you hit them hard and their first instincts to come straight up. Your rod goes, it's heavy action. It's just gonna go dink right away. And that puts slack in your line. They come up and they shake off and they're gone that quick. They just flop off. I don't lose, I do not lose the fish anymore. Like you said, a lot of times you just pick them up and start reeling and they just keep pulling against it. And then you get that little bit more of a limber, moderate rod. Now, when you're fighting the fish, you're a lot better off if, if you got bend and let the rod do its job. So. Hands down, in my opinion, it, it's great. Maybe not for everybody, but uh, I got a very similar build to Seth. I use a 7.2 medium heavy, and I just, all day long, I keep it in my hand. And not, not only that, I pick it up, and then I look over, and there's a, uh, a dock. Skip it under a dock, flip some grass, flip it around a, a stump, whatever I want. It's a, like a, a one-man show right there. It's an awesome setup. <clears throat> the frog, we're back on the frog. This time a popping frog. Um, you know, if you're if you're fishing really really thick lily pads and stuff like that, you definitely want to go with a heavy action rod, straight big braid and stuff like that. Something to get them out. Power Pro to cut cut as many lily pads and stuff you can away. But when it comes to a popping frog, uh, I'm using again a 7.2 medium heavy. Uh, I I just fling it anywhere. Uh, again, I'm attacking more open water than I am not. You know, looking up underneath bushes, stuff like that's going to get a big bite. Uh, I, I like a bunch of different frogs. This one's a Spro. I like the Terminator prop and frog. Um, I switch them all up. I'm using, this is the new Shimano Corrado. It's a 7.2 medium heavy. I am in love with that line of rods from the Corrado to the, uh, all the way up to the X Pride, the Zodius in between. That 7.2 medium heavy and 7.2 heavy are gems in the line. And I will tell you, uh, even from my Daiwa days, to my Shimano days now, I know so many people that are just it's got to be an NRX. It has to be an NRX. It has, that is not the right mentality to have. Don't get me wrong. That rod's a phenomenal rod, but there are gems in every single line. On the Daiwa side, from the Tula to the Steves, you just have particular rods that are what we'd call a gem, just a really good rod in that class. And and this one is one. The, the Corrado, it's priced good. Um, again, I can do anything. I'm using the new Corrado DC. Um, it, it's going to go down as one of the best bay casting reels out there. I control it again when I, when I, it's kind of cool. I once had a co-angler tell me I need to do grease my reel because of the DC. I think it went up underneath there. 
Uh, and I'm using 40 pound power pro. I see a lot of people oversizing their braid on their frogs, um, a bunch, definitely don't need to do it. You're not going to break braid all that often, especially if you're just stripping off the stuff that you're using. But again, the popping frog, very similar to how Seth was fishing the frog, uh, regular frog. It's a, it's a go-to and from Florida to Minnesota, it gets big bites. Yeah. Back to that braid thing. I'll say 50 pound braid is the absolute biggest I ever throw. Yeah, me too. Uh, you see a lot of guys throw 65, 80, um, it really just doesn't cut grass near as well. Um, honestly, like, especially when you get around reeds, stuff like that, I can cut a reed in half a 30 pound braid and you can't do that with 50 or 60. You lose casting distance It'll just too. ball up on, on the reeds. It's just, it's just like a knife, you know what I mean? A razor blade's gonna go through something easier than a thick knife, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, just cast something to think further about. Too. Yeah, casting distance, everything. Okay, square bell. Um, this is something I like to throw a lot around rip wrap, sea walls, usually an off off color water deal. Um, I started throwing that Rapala BX Brat last year, been in love with it. It's a pretty small frame square bill, but gets a ton of bites. Um, I'm throwing this on actually my jerk bait rods, six nine medium light, 10 pound fluoro. And uh, this is where I'll go down to speed and reels when I'm cranking or stuff like that. I'm still gonna throw a seven three. I really don't. The only time I ever throw like a six to one anymore is like winter fishing when I have to like force myself to crawl like a swim mm -hmm. bait on the bottom, something like that. Everything else, I like the speed just because I like to keep my troll motor cranked up and go down the bank. And a six three is fine if you're standing in one spot and lying in a square bill. But when my boat's going a mile and a half, two miles an hour towards my cast, it's nice to have that extra reel speed. I can just fish so much faster, cover so much water um and a square bill it's it's an awesome awesome way to get bites when fishing's tough uh something about it that reaction bite just coming through them rocks bouncing off stuff you can throw around wood a lot too but typically if i see a bank if i'm you know fishing in places that don't have a lot of grass and i see a seawall or a, a riprap bank uh, immediately i'm picking up a square bill and going down it just a great way to get a lot of bites and catch some big fish doing it too and square bills come through if you if you just get yourself to throw it a little bit and, and just get the feel like you would flipping a jig into wood they come through sometimes better than a jig yeah, but the one mistake i see a lot of people see is if this is if this is your branch or whatever and people on here can't see but if that's your branch your tree lay down they, they hit the edges of it and they're afraid to throw into it and a lot of times that's when you're going to get your bite is when you throw into it and you just slowly working it through and it just it loads up and you, yeah. and you get yourself a fish and there's a lot of times too when especially on pressured waters where, you know, if you flip that lay down, you wouldn't have got bit. And if you threw a square bill right in the middle of it, you'll catch a big one. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just something to keep in the mix. Definitely a great way to cover water, a great way to get bit. But there is times and places where that square bill, you know, kick sure. everything else's butt. It will, definitely. The old Texas rig. Um, I kind of went with a heavy action Texas rig. Everyone, for the most part, should know what a Texas rig is. If you don't, it's just a, a peg, a weight, and whatever soft plastic it is that you want to use. Pretty self-explanatory at this point. Um, I love this setup right here. Um, I, I used to do it a lot with a Senko, like a Yamamoto Senko or something like that, and just flip it around. Uh, this year in particular, I fell in love with this Exo stick. Uh, this setup, I'm using in pads a bunch, um, flipping it up in, into thick pads, want to get it down in the root system where those bass want to hold and the nice thing about it has a big fat tail on it it's ribbed it disperses a little bit more water but when I sit there and just kind of on a light line just kind of sit there and, and pop my line a little bit that fat tail gets to go in and it comes right through the stuff um, gets a big bite the colors are awesome here here I'm I'm back to a flipping stick I'm running a G Loomis GLX 894 flipping rod uh, straight braid I probably got 50 pound power pro SSV2 again I'm even more so when we're talking about uh, uh, emerged vegetation stuff, thick stuff. When you put your braid in that, if you're using a braid that is a real abrasion to cut stuff, a lot of times you can hear it outside. I mean, you can hear it. You can stand right there and go, zzz, 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 and you can you can feel it and hear it come through that stuff. If you go to one of the softer braids that are on the market, in this case the SSV2, you can't feel that. You can't hear it. You can't nothing. And I think those fish get super conditioned. To hearing that line, yeah. um, especially places like Florida, oh where it's yeah, always shallow and yeah. always getting messed with. Yeah, the quieter you are, and I can tell you some stuff too about being quiet when you're doing this kind of stuff. 
uh, Bree and I were down in Florida doing a little filming deal. We came back through and there's a bunch of pads everywhere. And I was quiet, stealthy, let the wind let me come in there. And I was even long casting to all these pods of everything. I caught a couple. We power pulled down. We ate a sandwich and just sat there and, you know, talked for a little bit. And all right, let's get back to work. And I stood back up, hadn't done nothing. Troll motor was still in. Power pulls were down. I picked that back up, made a, a cast into everything I just fished and caught two or three out of every single one of those. They forgot I was there. They knew I was there. Um, there's no doubt. I came in super quiet. Those fish still knew that I was there and they knew my presence. Uh, once they forgot about me, it was amazing how many fish I started to pick up. Um, again, I'm using that Biospot Exostick. I'm using a 4 out owner jungle. Again, that's got that Zowire on. It's a straight shank hook now. It's got a nice little floral carving keeper so it doesn't tear your baits at all when you're using it. Uh, the, jung the jungle hook's awesome. And then I'm, I'm using a eighth to a quarter ounce Wu Tungsten. Never, this is the new Never Chip. Uh, they don't chip. You smash it with a hammer, the thing won't chip at all, which kind of does bother me some when, when all of a sudden I'm showing, like, you know, when you can see the metally part of the tungsten or something on the weight. I think that sometimes can be a little bit too shiny for the fish to see. I really like the matted colors. I think they hide a little bit better. And again, that SSV2, and in a lot of cases, I'll go straight braid, but when I can get away with it, if I feel like I can manage it, I'll go 25 pounds Seeger and Vizex uh, leader every time. I just think you're going to get more bites. I really do. They can't see it nearly as good. And again, a Shimano Corrado. I'm using a 200 XG. That's an eight speed reel. I'm with Seth. Unless I got to really slow it down, I basically don't even use the seven, uh, seven speeds all that much. I'm like a six or an eight, you know, seven, maybe sometimes still if I'm uh, winding a bait like a swim jig that I want to slow down a little. But when they eat it, I need to pick up the line. And I need to get them in right away. How many times are you throwing a swim jig or something and all of a sudden a, a fish comes from the back, hits that thing and takes off the other way. And you just can't catch up to him in time. He's gone. You're like, what, what just happened? He came off by the time you try to get a hook in him. It's too late. So that fast gear ratio. And I think years ago they were still working with those eight speed reels. They didn't, maybe didn't have the, the guts in them they to really. Yeah. But now they got, they got all that figured out and they're <clears> as strong as they are fast. And uh, again, that's just uh, that's an awesome setup. You can throw it around everywhere. A lot of people want to flip that jig, but again, if this kind of setup, I can throw that Senko further. I don't need to get right next to it. You're always going to get more bites if you can stay away and you can be quiet. I cannot express that enough to people. You have to be quiet. Smallies. Nice. Let's talk about small yeah. mouse, huh? The Ned Rig. The Ned Rig catches some fish, man. I think even him and I are guilty of giving it a thumbs down there for a while. I thought it was kind of like a jig worm. Um, said, you know, we've been throwing jig worms since we were kids. Uh, the Ned Rig's not like a jig worm, depending on how you're throwing it. Um, again, one of the biggest things about a Ned Rig is you want it to float up. Now, every other bait falls falls down, the Ned Rig pops back up. They don't see it every day, so they bite it. Killer smallie bait. I know you can catch largemouth and spotted bass with it. Uh, but in some cases it's taking place of a tube, something like that. Uh, I'm using a G Loomis NRX 822S. It's a shaky head rod. It's just under seven foot. Uh, I really like that. I'm using the Shimano Excellence 4000. Again, that same reel I use. I, it's the only one I own. I, I got a few Stratic CF4s. I love them. Uh, but I, I just, I like that reel. So I got a bunch of them. I'm using the 10 pound power pro SSV2. In this case, it's in chartreuse and I use a bright floor, a bright braid. Uh, on all my spinning rods. I don't see the point in not doing it. I can't tell you how many times I cast out there and I'm just like sitting there and I go to lift up my rod and I just see my chartreuse moving off to the side. It's the best. You can reel right down or Kentucky Lake, I was throwing a drop shot and in the current, I was just watching my drop shot go. And if my drop shot stopped, I just reeled down and set the hook. I never felt a thing. If my if it didn't just keep going and fall off the ledge, I knew one picked it up and I just reeled back. A lot of time they're putting back against the current. And I got them every single time. Uh, eight pound Seeger and Vizex. I do like lighter line uh, on the Ned head when I'm throwing it. Uh, I'm not afraid to break them off. And again, there's a bunch of different plastics now that people can use. Uh, cutting down Senkos, cutting the, the, I think that's a Robo Worm one. Of course, the, the standard uh, Ned, what, what is it? Z Man, mm -hmm. the, the, the TRD, all good stuff. But a Ned rig gets bit, definitely yeah. gets bit. Great fish catcher, especially on smallmouth. Like if you don't smallmouth fish and you're new to it or whatever, and you want to get bit, that's probably the easiest way to do it. And, and I gotta say, this year on Malax, you guys know I do a lot of guiding out there. There was a time when we got a bunch of rain and that place got dirty, and it got really, really, really tough out there. Really hard to get a bite, but you can turn to the Ned Rig and still pick up four pounders, which is which is key to do. Um, 
landscape bite. It looks like everything to them. I think it looks like a crawdad. I think it looks like a yeah. bait fish on the bottom, whatever yeah. it is, they eat it. You can drop it too. I've had good oh, yeah. luck dropping it on fish and, you know, instead Definitely. of a drop shot. Definitely. All right. Hair jig. Uh, for me, if the conditions are right, this back to everything. It's a confidence bait for me. Um, it's it's gonna shine mostly in in the spring and early summer. Uh, you can definitely catch them on it year round. I know a lot of guys down south catch a you know those Tennessee smallmouth guys. They catch them pretty good on it in the winter. But for me, it's a kind of a cruiser bait. Anytime they're up shallow, moving around, it's something I'm gonna be flinging around. But you gotta set up on a seven foot six inch medium light. You really need the long soft rod to get the casting distance out of this. Um, six pound nano braid, super thin. I think it's like a little over one pound diameter, uh, an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, but that long soft rod and the the super, super thin braid are pretty much the keys to casting this thing. It's a, I throw a three thirty second ounce jig most of the time, super light with that marabou on there and everything you can do to get, you know, an extra 10 feet, an extra 10 feet. It really adds up on a cast so uh, a long rod super super thin braid and always keeping the wind at your back is gonna you know make that a lot easier to fish but it's something i just wheel around a lot like a little swim bait keeping it up off the bottom moving slow and steady um definitely want clear water for this this isn't something you want to throw at you know mississippi river after it rains six inches or something like that this is like i want to be able to see the bottom in at least four feet if not, the clearer the better. If you go somewhere and you can sit bottom 20 feet, it's it's going to be a great option for you. Uh, comes in a bunch of different colors. I, I kind of like sticking with blacks and browns, but I know the guys down south where they got you know shad forage or a lot of minnow eaters or they're doing good on the whites and the grays and stuff like that. But it's something I always have on the deck when I'm smallmouth fishing. Um, if I can see them and I can't get them to bite anything. That's usually one of the best ways to pick them up, especially if there's mayflies hatching and you're not throwing that, you're you're missing out for sure. And I am the hair jig whisperer, just so we know. The red one in the spring is killer. Um, I don't even know if he throws it much. Do you throw the red one much? Oh, there's something about like Rayburn red or red in free spawn that really gets big female bass not in the right mood. I don't know why it is that way, but I played with that one a bunch this year. And it, it was it was it was awesome. I mean, the hair jig gets bit, and another thing is too, it shines around fly hatches. Anytime the flies are hatching, mayflies, fish flies, whatever, those bigger smallmouth know that they can look up. Uh, all the rest of them are still looking for crawdads and stuff like that, but those big four or five pounders, they know that they can look up. And uh, Seth said it to me years ago. You know, a, a largemouth bass eats one big bluegill a day, and he gets to be five pounds. Smallmouth will eat. A thousand minnows a day to get to be five pounds or a thousand bugs I, at at uh st Clair this year all of a sudden it got super calm and the, the bass and like 20 foot of water started coming up and just just it was like super calm and 20 feet of water all of a sudden you see them come up and just and we turned to the i started turning to the hair jig and it just picks up those bites that nothing else out yeah. there is gonna bite yeah when they're on bugs you ain't you can catch a few on a popper and a few on a fluke but i mean it's those are pitiful numbers compared to what you can do on a hair jig. It's got drawing power like a big swim bait does. It's amazing that it'll pull the biggest fish out of the school to come and get that thing. The spinner bait. Oh, man, I learned this actually a co-angler was whooping my butt one day on Lake Oneida on a bright chartreuse spinner bait. When he jumped in my boat, I was pretty green. It's like my first term at Oneida. He jumped in my boat, a New York dude, jumped in, pretty Italian guy, and he had a bright, bright chartreuse spinner bait. And I was like, awesome. And then he kicked my butt for two hours <laughs> until I was digging in my boat trying to put together a chartreuse. Again, smallies got eyes. They got great eyes. We've said it before, large mouth, like a mountain lion that doesn't have good eyes. It uses its lateral line. It hides in the weeds, hides under docks, hides in laydowns, and it ambushes its predators. Smallies are like a pack of wolves. They have great eyes. They use each other, and they, they just do not like something. I don't even know what they think it is. I have no clue what they think that thing is, but they don't like it. And they will smash it. Uh, sometimes I throw it on braid. I think on this one I had it on invisible. Generally, I prefer it on braid. Actually, I don't think I was thinking this morning when I put this thing together. You just cast it further, and with a limber rod, you just as big a long cast. And I mean, I'm burning it faster than you could. I'm not slowing it like a spinner bait and working it. I'm moving it so fast. I don't want. They do have good eyes. I don't want them to get a real good look at it. 
I just want them to just smack it on top. And you can cover water. If, if it's all of a sudden you've got a big reef and you're just, man, there's, there's fish everywhere. You place like Mille Lacs, these small waters, there is literally small moss everywhere. Um, sometimes they're hard to target. If you don't know the lake that well, you don't know where the sweet spots are. Get in the wind, let the wind blow you around out there. Use the wind to your advantage and make monster casts with the spinnerbait. And uh, you, you will get rewarded on pretty good. I'm, again, I'm using that same Shimano Corrado 7.2 medium heavy. Like, generally, I'd be using like Power Pro, probably 30 or 40 pound Power Pro. Um, and I'm using a Shimano Corrado K. That's an FG, a seven speed. Eight speed might be a little quick for me. So I'm using that seven speed there to, to but still, I want to stay on that bait. I'm, I'm moving it fast. You're exhausted. If you're doing it right, you get exhausted throwing that spinnerbait. Uh, and again, this is a bass man. This is out of Australia. Seth and I both, uh, spinner baits are not all created equal. They're not. And everyone makes one. Uh, bass man makes a really, really good one. Component wise, they're right. I've never had spinner baits that last me so long. Usually you have a good day on a spinner bait. Might yeah. as well throw it in the garbage can, open up a new one. These last a uh, long time. Uh, again, Australian, you can find them here in the U.S. I think now or yeah. very, very soon if you can't. So um, yeah. awesome setup. Yeah, spinner more of a summertime deal. This definitely definitely spinner bait. post spawn too. When they come yeah. off the spawn, they're hungry. <clears throat> they still haven't got out in that deep of water. They're up shallow. And again, those, you know, and and I have, the guy then was convinced, and and he he knew better. He had like three nice ones in the box before I had anything, and uh, and then all of a sudden I had three like that. Once I figured out what he had going on, one of the, um, but he he liked it on cloudy, windy days, which is great. But you can also amazingly enough on sunny. Calm days, they still smoke that thing. You just got to keep it moving yeah. and keep it moving fast. I do like a little bit of wind, but yeah. Yeah, a little it wind. Have wind to be crazy, you, want, you definitely want that wind in there. That, like you can't reel it fast enough. <clears throat> and jerk bait, um, another smallmouth bait I'd never go fishing without. Um, year round. Year round. Um, fishing on a 6 9 medium light, pretty much 10 pound floral every time. Sometimes it'll go to 8, sometimes 12, but typically getting 10. I like a deep diving jerk bait over a shallow one they're just a lot a lot more versatile if i want to keep it up i can if i want to get it down i can and a lot of times smallmouth fishing you're still fishing that jerk bait over fairly deep water just because you got the visibility um you know i'll be throwing that in like 10 12 15 feet of water a lot um as far as see it like it it plays year round i'll do things a little different in the summer with colors and how i work it but Typically, early, early pre-spawn and really, really late when everyone throws a jerk bait. That's your typical jerk, jerk, pause, let it sit for a long time. And I like throwing more natural colors. Uh, in the summertime, that seems to be when everybody puts a jerk bait down. Um, that's probably my favorite time of year to fish it. I like throwing a lot brighter colors, something of the orange, chartreuse, something they can see a long ways off, and I'll fish it like incredibly fast, like as hard and fast as I possibly can. I've, I mean, lots of times where I've seen fish that I couldn't get to eat anything, but if you ripped a jerk bait, you know, close to them in front of their face as fast and hard as you could, they'd come unglued on it. And um, I've had lots of fish I've caught that I didn't think were catchable on anything that I've caught on jerk baits in the summertime, you know, sight fish and stuff like that. Just fish that would follow stuff or run away from other things. Um, you can make them bite a jerk bait by fishing it that hard and that fast. Another thing, like if you're doing it right, you know, you got to put it down every 20 minutes or so. You're exhausted. It's going to be wore out. Yep, no doubt. Uh, jerk bait too, of course. I love the jerk bait. A smallies, like I just said, year round. They, they will eat that thing year round. Um, but at the same time, largemouth too. Do like a jerk bait, especially if you're around shad lakes. And But generally then I would be more early spring, late fall type of stuff is when the jerk bait would get on. But with the smallmouth, again, they're an eye visual thing. And, and I'm a big fan of uh, three hooks on my jerk baits. I've seen some with only two, and I think you're just, it's not the deal. You got to have three. Yeah, Especially I can't tell you how many times they just nip one, and again, that limber rod will just keep them on it. The blade bait. I actually love a blade bait. Uh, a couple years ago, Seth and I started messing around with some blade baits when the water temps got cold. Um, we're getting there very, very fast right now. It's going to be yeah. a blade bait time of year um large mouth and small mouth it shines but again smallies it really shines uh, i'm using this is a biovex paddis blade bait it's been one of my favorites since back in the days when i was with biovex it's a great little blade bait um generally i take those little two hooks off i don't i can't keep fish on and just go to a small like size eight maybe size six treble hook uh, something like that that'll definitely hook your hookup ratio will be much much better 
Uh, again, I'm using a G Loomis NRX. That's an 852. It's just like a seven foot, seven foot one medium action is about perfect. Uh, the same Shimano Accents reel. And I do want to say something about these reels. If Again, Seth and I can be a little bit spoiled at this point in our careers as far as what we have ex accessibility and stuff when it comes to rod and reels. You'll notice with my spinning reels, I'm going to get the best that money can buy or that high I have access to. When it comes to a bait caster, I don't spend nearly as much money or concern on one I want. Like I love the Corrado. I want one that casts far and is a and is bulletproof. It's, it's a winch at that point. It's all about my rod. I'm just hitting them and it's just a winch. You stay on them. The spinning reels completely opposite and you want that drag you really need that drag um i can remember losing a lot of smallies before by trying to play them out and get my hand now i just never take my hand off the reel i trust that reel tick 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 and i work against them and they never get that slack in the line they just stay on uh 10 pound seager and biz x check your line a bunch fishing around zebra mussels and stuff like that um Again, the blade bait, it's coming into season now. Malax and stuff like that is getting very, very cold, very, very fast. And it's blade bait season and stuff like that. Slow down and uh, a blade bait that you turn to the old school stuff. And it's been around since the hands of time. Been catching oh, yeah. Since before. Yeah. Probably yeah. different species. They probably brought it to this. So, oh, yeah. again, blade bait, it's a fun bait. It's kind of addicting. I'll sit down there and I, I see guys down south throw a blade bait like in the really cold on riprap and stuff. I've never particularly found that bite. but. I'm just casting it out there over over the good rocks and stuff like that, and then letting it fall right back to the bottom, just like I'm yo-yoing a trap or something. You go to pick it up, and instead of a rock, it's a zzz, and they're on, and uh, it's kind of an addicting bite. Yeah, I love it. Don't don't overwork it. It seems no, like the less you not. do, the more you know. You get a few vibrations every time you pick yeah. up on it. If it gets real cold, I'll sit there and just crawl it. It's just barely enough, and again, it's just something that gets bit. Yeah. Spy bait. Uh, this is something that I, I tried a long time ago when they first came out, didn't have any success. And then the last couple of years, um, really started shining with it. I kind of learned when to throw it and when not to. Um, this thing's going to go really well. It's really similar to fishing a hair jig, except the seasons are different. This, this is going to shine in the middle of the summer, early fall, when that hair jig bites kind of starts to dwindle. Um, and anywhere they're eating perch. If you're on perch eating small mouse, that's probably one of the best baits to possibly throw for them. Uh, again, going with the long spinning rod, seven six, medium light. And for some reason, I tried a bunch of different stuff. Unless you're throwing like a, I mean, you need like a 30, 40 foot plus fluorocarbon leader, your bait just doesn't work right. And you gotta throw a light line to it. This is a, I mean, straight six pound test fluorocarbon pretty much the deal for this bait it's just a slow steady reel you kind of mix it up a little bit kill it speed it up slow it down um nothing too crazy but slow and steady and it, it catches them from two feet to 40 feet um but yeah it's that midsummer on deal it's it uh, i tried it early in the spring and stuff and but when i was catching really good on a hair jig and Throw it right into those same schools and couldn't get a bite on it and gave up on it and then started getting my butt whooped on it a couple of years later. But uh, uh, I do a couple of modifications to them. I tie a little bit of marabou to the tail hook. Uh, that helped a lot. These fish will come, they'll follow this bait a lot and just kind of nip it. They really don't. Sometimes they'll get it good and you'll have both hooks in them, but a lot of them just bite that back hook and putting that marabou on there. I went from just getting one barely in there to getting two or three of those back trebles in their mouth. And uh, I tie the hooks on with braid loops just to take a little less leverage out of it. I don't know what that deal is with that bait, but fishing at factory is like the fish losingest thing I've ever thrown. So definitely switch your especially hooks for out. small moss. And the time of year you're catching them in, you know, August is when it really shines. That's when the fish are as hot as they're going to be. They're jumping twice as much and pulling twice as hard. So um, yeah, making those couple modifications went from a you know 50% landing bait to a, a 90 plus. So um and like i said if they're eating perch that's it's game over it's but one of the best baits to throw we were saying at champlain this year that the the spy bait catches every perch in the lake and five pound smallies it's amazing perch do it's like amazing it. that oh yeah they sit there and nip at it nip at it, nip at it and all of a sudden it just stops and you're like and they're on and i i got it the the rod is hugely important it has to be a soft rod yeah. i mean you can go as soft as you can find with them things that'll keep them on um and again switch out treble hooks 
switch them out often and, and make sure you get the tackiest, sharpest ones that you can. And your biggest goal is to try to get another one of those hooks in that fish at some point. Don't horse them. You sit there and let them do their thing. And what will end up happening is the smaller will just get tired and, and he'll and he'll give up. It's, it is stressful to throw in a tournament. Um, trying to keep them pegged to it, but it, it draws it draws big bites yeah. and uh, clear water deal, clear water deal, and definitely a perch thing. You fish over the top of grass, they'll come right up out of it. A lot of times, those smallies don't want to get in the grass; they want to sit on the edges or above it. Uh, again, they're using their eyes, so that thing comes through and they just they catch them. Uh, one one thing too with the straight floral, if you're in love with the 2500 100 size reel, that's great. Uh, if you went to one in Seth's case, a 3012 or a 4000 size on the Shimano side for your straight mono or straight floral. That'll definitely help you a bunch with line twists and stuff like that by beefing up that reel. And again, that drag, you just want to have that really good drag. Top water. Uh, we could have talked about top water on largies too, especially around shad lakes and stuff like that. Uh, smallies, uh, the top water is awesome over the top of grass. Again, places maybe you throw that uh, spy bait, mm -hmm. top water is going to shine river systems um it's just smallmouth love to eat top water baits they're always looking up in this case i'm throwing uh storm arashi cover pop I, I really like this popper i don't have a hard bait sponsor um out of plastics and the jigs um i'm not in a hurry to get one i really like being able to throw whatever i want whenever i want to throw it and i can find what's the best baits that are out there in this case i love the arashi cover pop it's like a half ounce it's pretty good. It's, Five, tail it's, 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 it's tail weighted. It, it casts <clears throat> far for a popper, but it's a big profile and you can still work it like a top water bait. Uh, there's a bunch of them that I like. I like the shower blow. That's a really, really good one by Evergreen. Great top water bait and just spooks and anything like it. Awesome. Uh, I switch out, I, again, I switch out my treble hooks all the time on my top water. I want to be as sticky, tacky, sharp as they can possibly be. I'm using the Shimano Zodius. It's a six foot 10 medium action rod. Good little jerk bait rod, awesome top water. I can throw about everything on it. And I'm using a Shimano Cronarch 150 XG. Even more important, that eight speed reel, you know, they flush that thing and you're just trying to catch up your line and then, and then give it to them. Um, I'm using Power Pro. And, and one thing is I'm using 30 pound Power Pro. That's more of a casting style. I can cast a lot further with regular Power Pro. And then I'm using a small, very short, maybe a foot, uh, 20 pound Seeger and Vizex leader on my top water. There's two reasons for it. One, I just think it weights the bait down just a little bit, keeps it on there. And how many times does a fish blow the bait and they don't eat it? And then if you're just using straight braid, it tangles up in your trebles right away. And it just drives me crazy. It's a blown cast. If they're schooling, you throw it in there. One smacks it and the, the, you, you, everyone knows it throws braid, how bad braid cannot on its own. I don't even know how it happens half the time. You can pay me a million bucks to make it do it again, but it happens all the time. That little bit of, of, a, of a fluorocarbon leader definitely prevents it getting off that hook. So when they hit it, it just sits there and then boom, another one grabs it. Um, but top water, I don't think you can beat it when you come to small mall fishing. Well, for sure. Especially coming off the spawn too. <clears throat> yeah. Coming off the spawn, the big fish are still shallow. They're looking for big meals. They're finicky on what they're eating. They've been pressured hard. And, uh, that, that bait comes in front of them that they're going to eat it. And river swam off. No, you almost don't need another bait yeah, sometimes. You really. almost don't. Swim bait. Uh, this ain't a big swim bait. This is, you know, I'm talking two and a half to four inch paddle tail swim baits. Fishing on an outcast golden eye swimmer head. Uh, you can do this with a spinning rod. I like to use a bait caster. I just, I don't know, I like it better. Uh, throw it on a seven foot medium light. And straight floral for this. This is one of the few things, single hook baits that I'll throw straight floral for. I just, I just feel like you kind of need that bow in your line to work it deep. Um, there's something I'll crawl on the bottom a lot. Like right now, there's a couple different ways you can fish it. Like earlier in the spring, in the summer, I like fishing like small or real light heads, uh, eighth ounce stuff, little swimmers, keep them up high in the water column. And then this time of year, I'll fish a lot of heavier ones, three ace, half ounce, and just keeping steady bottom contact and crawling that along. And I'll, like I said, I'll fish anywhere from eight to 20 pound floral. It kind of depends on the depth and what I'm trying to do with it. Um, you got a Biospawn Exo Swim on this one. Uh, there are a bunch of good swim baits out there you can throw. I, I like that paddle tail style and natural colors for small mouse with this deal. Usually some sort of translucent minnow color, but, uh, 
I can cast it a mile and it catches really big. The two biggest smallmouths I've ever caught have been on basically that exact same setup right there. Um, really shines as far as bottom crawling going late in the year. Um, you know, right where we're at right now, really. And uh, it's the most natural thing you can really throw at a fish. Um, clear wire still works well in dirty wire if you, you know, change your colors up a little bit. But uh, a lot you can do with that. I'll, I'll tight line that a lot keep it up high, crawl it on the bottom. That's something I can work every water column with. And, uh, you know, like I said, most realistic thing I can throw at the fish, get a ton of bites and um, just a really good way to, good way to catch them. Um, obviously I use it a lot. I help design the golden eye. Um, I use the eighth, like you were saying, there's a reason for that one, the fish are real shallow um, in the spring, the eighth ounce size and stuff like that. A lot of times the rocks are full of slime that time of year. And you can't put nothing on them or you're just gonna gunk it back up so that light weight like that helps it come through and it gives the bait the lighter the head the more action that the bait can have to it so sometimes you go to kill it and that paddle tail just goes like that on its way down um, sometimes if i'm throwing an eighth i was taught kind of how to throw this at sturgeon bay uh, with my buddy mark courts and he hangs out with a bunch of the canadian dudes and they all throw spinning rods when they do it it's their thing so it's kind of taught that way. If I'm springtime, eighth ounce, something really small, maybe like a 2.8 or really small little swim baits, I, I prefer the spinning rod. Outside of that, I definitely like the, the bait caster. And again, this, this head is meant to go through the rocks and not get hung up nearly as much as any of the other ones uh, out there. So, it's, I mean, it's a minnow, make it minnow. A two. I've always said I've never met a small mouth that won't eat a two. If I had to have one bait in my life, I don't know if it'd be a two, but it'd be a good call. They definitely, from largemouth stuff that he was talking about early in flipping, it looks just like so much of the stuff they eat. It has a very erratic action. The tube is like a fumbled football. You never know which way it's going to go. Um, it kind of spirals and goes out of control. It, it's not a controlled thing. So I think to the fish, it looks really good. Um, again, most of the time, I think they probably think it's a crawdad, maybe a perch, something like that. Goby. Yeah, I really like the small yeah. ones. Yep, uh, goby's a big, big, big one too. Yep, definitely gobies when you're talking about the Great Lakes and stuff. Uh, when it comes to, I really like the small tubes. Um, the two and three quarter inch size get bit baits out of Wisconsin. Uh, I get most all my tubes from him. He does a really good job, good colors, but it's small, it's compact. And, and you can get all sorts of different kinds. But again, you got to, when you throw those, you have to find a, he makes one too. We got to find like a, a tube jig that's got a short shank on it. Um, otherwise the, the, the shank will stick away, you know, wait, the hook will come away too far out of the tube. Um, I'm using a G Lumis NRX 872 jig worm rod. Uh, it's an awesome rod. Uh, it was actually designed by Mark Zona way back in the day, who was the most incredible tube fisherman I've ever watched uh, with a tube. Um, I think he can catch them on tubes and nobody can. And it's a great That's rod. True. It's 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 a, a longer rod, like 7.3 medium, like a strong medium rod. Great for that. It lets the tip bow up and it's got nothing but that backbone. Again, a tube. And you can throw a tube on a bait caster. I know a lot of guys like throwing it. I saw a lot of guys at St. Clair ripping tubes and stuff for smallies using it on a bait caster. Um, but again, I, I, I like it on a spinning rod for most all my presentations, especially around here. And I'm using... Power Pro SSB2 again in that Chartreuse 10 pound. And here I got 10 pound in VizX. If I'm using, if I'm around a lot of zebra mussels, I'll bump that up to like 12 or something. So I'm not breaking off. If you want to get it down in the rocks and, you know, and work it through there. A lot of times you just think you're on a rock and it turns into a bass. But I, I don't, I think if you go smally fishing anywhere in the country, a tube should always be on the deck of your boat. Mine's never not every single day I'm out there. Out. Drop shot, um, another rod, if, if I'm going smallmouth fishing, has to be on the deck at all times, regardless of, see, and with the exception of winter, um, it's on my deck all year long. But I use a number two to number six VMC Nico and uh, woo and business shot. I, I like heavy drop shot weight for smallmouths. Um, large muscle fish them a lot lighter, but I pretty much always, always use a half ounce. I like the fast fall. I like the good bottom contact. Another thing with smallies with that invisi shot, it's not shiny. It's like a real dull brown. And uh, I don't know how many times I always used to use the shiny ones. And you'd have fish that for sure ate your weight. Small mouths can be like really stupid, and they see something shiny fall and they just eat it. And uh, or switching it looks like to a that, bait fish. yes, it does a lot, like a little jigging spoon or something. Uh, switching to that drop shot weight. 
really eliminated that problem. And it, it wasn't something that happened all the time. I mean, it might happen once a day, maybe twice a day, but in a tournament, you know, that could be the five pounder you needed. You never know. And like I said, they're stupid and eat the weight sometimes. So going to that really eliminated that problem. There's a bunch of different baits I drop shot with. This one's a Biospawn Exo Stick. I tear it down to about like three and a half inches long or so. Wacky rigged it. Um, I'll throw a little swim baits a lot too. But a uh, rod 7.1 medium, 3,000 spinning reel. I use eight pound braid to six to 10 pound leader. Almost always eight pound though. But uh, the gray way you can catch them casting it, catch them if I'm dropping on fish in the right time of the year, it's pretty much always a drop shot, the exception of like winter. Sometimes in the summer they want something on the bottom. But uh, that's, that's one of them rigs you just always have to have. There's the, Rigs probably caught as many small mouse as anything in the last 10 years. Um, great for fishing vertical off the graph, great for casting, great for dragging. It's it's just something that's it's always going to be around, always going to be a major player for small mouse. Uh, one thing, too, on that Invisa shot, I saw a lot. I've done a lot of uh, camera work underwater, trying to capture fish eating stuff. Uh, drop shot is phenomenal for bed fish, especially smallies and larges, both but I can't tell you how many times they will pick up the weight. They're just trying to move whatever it is off and they'll grab that weight, move it away. That definitely, you can feel it too. Sometimes you go out here fishing for small as you get a bite and you're like, got him. And you're like, and he's there for a minute and then he comes off, but your bait and everything's still perfect. And he had, I've even had it where I'm like, got him. And then oh, he ripped my yeah, weight yeah. right off of my line. And you're like, oh, he definitely had it. So anything like that, that you can get away from, um, them biting that thing, the drop shot gets bit. One thing too, if you're fishing around goby water, you definitely want to shorten that drop shot, um, your leader. Um, gobies can only jump so high, they can't swim, they don't have a swim bladder or nothing, so they can't like go like this, they can just dart around, put one in your live boat once and try to get them out of there, it'll take you an hour. Fast as crap, it goes everywhere, so that short leader is way more realistic to them. And again, sometimes you want a super long leader too. When yeah, you're I lean more to long, I, I always want, I shouldn't say always, but small mouse, the exception of like super cold water, like I'd rather have a bait five feet above them than four inches below. It slowly works their way. They're getting you know annoyed I mean? easy. Like they like looking up. They like going up to eat. Uh, you know, a lot of times in summer, I'll fish a pretty long leader and I'll drop shot two, three feet, um, keep it up. I just, I, I'd rather have my bait a long ways above them than just an inch or two below them, so. And I know we got a lot of co-anglers on here and a lot of young guys here And the thing as you're co-angling in the back of the boat. A lot of times the, the pro or the boater on the front is, is got his whatever he wants, it's good. And if you go with a little bit extra longer one, you'll pick up bites that he's not getting, he, she's not getting. You, you can definitely do that by going with a little bit longer leader. And I've seen some people go really long on them and just let them sit there longer, especially if you know the fish is there. If I know he's there, I'm just gonna let it sit there long enough. A small moth can't deal they got attitude problems big time. That's why I love that fish so much, but they do not want anything around them. They're temperamental. And uh, I mean, sometimes I think, you know, they know the boat's there. They can be 10, 12 foot and I get right over the top and they know the boat's there. But if you think about it, how many times do you think you move the boat and a crawdad or perch scatter when they see that shadow of the boat? I think bass utilize the boat sometimes to catch their bait slipping. So they know that you're there, but they're still gonna bite the bait and if that longer leader. It'll get them. Good? Yeah. That's it for now. Uh, view our webinars here. Uh, you can go on my, my website under webinars. You can visit YouTube, all that. We put all these up here for everyone to view. I have a special webinar coming up. It's just me, me and my buddy out of this one. It's uh, Bass Pro Shops picked it up. It's going to be a Lowrance exclusive, uh, utilizing Navionics mapping and Lowrance. I'm going to go through a bunch of different screenshots on a lot of their new technology that they got out there. It's coming up October 23rd. Um, it's gonna be online only. So anyone that's got Lorance wants to know more about that kind of stuff, you can ask a bunch of questions and I'll definitely get to answering them all. But you know me with these, I love doing these kind of webinars, seminars, showing you visually what it is I'm looking at and making it make sense to everybody. Uh, I love that part of fishing. I love the electronics game. A uh, huge thank you to Grandview Lodge and Boomer's Tackle. If it wasn't for Boomer's Tackle setting us up here, he's got a great shop. Uh, Kyle's always carrying the baits people want. You can check them out online. Uh, I swear I can call him and say, this bait's hot. You got to get it. It's such a rare thing for tackle stores to do that. And he's like, done deal. 
calls me and lets me know he's got it in a week. Yeah. It's awesome. And again, setting it up, he does this for a lot of you guys here, the youth and stuff like that is important. I really wish Seth and I had this when we were your age to be able to go and sit down and hang out with guys like uh, Dean Capper and Brad Leiferman, guys that we looked up to that were, that were killing it in the fishing game and be able to hear this kind of info. Uh, we didn't we didn't get that. We definitely didn't get that. So this is a luxury, and a lot of it is brought to you by uh, Boomer's Tackle. Let's talk about some giveaway stuff. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna answer some questions here in a minute. Uh, we want to talk about our featured giveaways. These will we'll announce that we have a whole bunch of people on online. We always do. We really appreciate that. Uh, I'm giving away a Shimano Corrado setup that 7.2 medium heavy with the Shimano Corrado, Corrado reel. Uh, I think Fighter's got a Tatula setup, mm -hmm. Daiwa, rod and reel, rod and reel combo, all cast tackle, stepped up. They're they're giving away prizes for both people here and away. And Wu Tungsten, of course, uh, going to be sending out a couple different prize packs to some winners. We'll we'll pick those afterwards. And uh, again, if you're online, you got a chance at that one. And then for our people here. Uh, well, again, we got an outcast tackle. I got a bass attitude hat. I, a lot of people compliment me on that hat. Shows a good one that you're going to want to drop on. Bass man, we talked about spinner baits. Uh, awesome one. Biospawn and Sims again stepping up with another challenger suit for somebody, uh, for someone here local. We don't have it here. We'll send it to you because we don't know what size for the winner that's going to get it. They'll happily send it out to you. So we'll go Sweet through prize. all that here in a little bit. Awesome prizes. That's one thing we like to do. Coming on, big thanks to Navionics. They set this deal up for us. Uh, you got Josh, my Josh's, my email is right here. My boy Fighter's email right there. Please don't ever hesitate to contact us. We'll answer any questions we can. Sometimes if it's if we're busy and we're running, we might not get to it. But uh, again, and don't it never hurts to bug us. If you haven't heard from us through a messenger or something, just hit us up again. Let us know. Hey, 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 answer this question. I got a question. We'll get right on it. That's it. Let us, I think we have to plug question. this one for the question. Three. I don't want to mess the thing. Okay, that's gone. We're going to, guys, again, we're going to address the questions online first. Um, that way you can hear what the question is. And then when we go offline, we'll answer everybody's questions here. And we'll get to the in-house prizes and all that kind of good stuff. Me. It's my favorite part. Yeah, questions are the bomb. Now we got to figure out how to do it. Ready? Oh. Hold on one second while we figure this out. Yep. How does it do that? It's really cool to be. Okay. Oops. There we go. Right, now we're talking. Start. What's newest to oldest? And it starts up there, yeah, but it's all before. The stash is sweet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Really, first one. That one comes there. Okay. Uh, for like the rest of the question. Do you always use a heavy cover swim jig or is it situational whether you use the regular versus the heavy cover? Kind of talk I, about that. I would say 90% of the time I'm using the heavy cover swim jig just simply throwing on braid to a leader or straight braid sometimes. Um, I, w I want that big hook in there. There's a few times in like real cold or colder water when I'm just like slow rolling it. I want a smaller profile. The regular swim jig allowed me to fish a smaller trailer on it. I'll go to that then, and uh, but nine times out of ten, it's that heavy cover swim jig. Uh, good question. What's your top trailer for your swim jig and size? We talked about that. He was talking about the vile yeah. craw, a craw style bait. Um, and then as far as size of swim jigs go, usually if I'm like straight winding it, I kind of you kind of need all sizes just to fish water depths. If I'm straight winding it, I like a lighter one, like a quarter. But if I'm like Alabama style fishing, I like like a heavier one, like a three eighths, just because there's so much up and down it's easier to keep it up um uh, you know what one and i'm i'm old school on this one i was taught with it and it just catches them i still like a grub a single tail grub on the back of a swim jig especially the floral carbon setup the smaller hook weed line fish and stuff like that uh we we never we didn't talk paddle tails kind of take away from the grub these days when it comes to smallmouth fish and stuff we didn't really talk about it but i will tell you a grub catches fish and i bet you sometime 
in the next few years, we'll watch the grub kind of come make a comeback. Everything kind of does. It's definitely a time and place. Yeah. Um, how long of a leader? I'm sure they're guessing. That's a good question when it comes I'm to the braid floral. Probably like I, I've never measured it. Basically, what I do is I'll tie my FG, reel it into the first guide above my reel, and then take my line, and I want to tie my bait on about even with my reel. So it's it's probably like a 10 foot, 8, 10 foot leader. Which also gives you a couple cutoffs too if you got to tie yep. your jig up real quick. But another thing is when you're going braid to floral, I think the little bit longer floral helps helps not let you pop or break off. It's a little bit more to absorb there. And again, you want that floral carbon to get your bait down. Uh, big thing and keep it away from the from the braid. Stupid tube at all? I don't stupid I never tube, really did it. but I know some people that are in love with it. Just it definitely works. I just it ain't one of my deals. It's a good question. Uh, we got are you talking about craw tubes or regular no, tubes? I'm talking about a regular tube. Uh, a craw tube's a it has its place. It works really well in Minnesota. There's a couple other places I've been where they really bite it good. Uh, a craw tube in my eyes is more of a Texas rig jig. It's just gonna fall straight. Um, it's definitely like one of the best flipping baits in Minnesota, but it's really that jig profile is what makes bulky, it good. And it's a, it, it doesn't have any of that erraticness that a, a, a regular tube does. So It's real soft. It's meant to fish grass a lot. Yeah. Uh, Seth, what rate, ratio reel you using on that swim jig? Eight to one. Uh, I think we kind of talked about it, but they're asking what's the advantages of, again, that extra wide gap with the split ring. Yeah, um, that's a new hook by VMC coming out. Um, Okay. For me, hooking percentage is way better with it. And the thing I like about it, like a lot of time when you skip a peg sink or your knot will get folded over and your, your bait don't fall right, it, it completely eliminates that problem being free swinging. And it probably adds a little action to your bait too. I think it keeps them on too. Yeah. So they can't get away from it. Again, it's not solid. They can't, it slides around. They can't, they can't get up. Uh, pegging a weight, I think I'm always pegging a weight. Uh, for the most part for the most part um, there's probably a time and a place to not we kind of talked about which hook uh when do you prefer popping frogs over walking frogs That's um a good one yeah a popping frog's probably better like uh open water bait or oh. if you're fishing like super thick mats you're probably better off with a walking frog yep uh, i like they, the they both walk just fine yep so they both walk no popping frog if i there. wanted to sit still a little bit more uh, if i want to throw it up underneath like some lay down something and get that big pop something to disperse that water and try to get that fish to bite a lot of times i'm not throwing popping frog in like lily pads or something like that it's going to work against you a lot um so but they both work um you ever anytime you ever prefer rattles in your frog i i personally don't put them in there but i mean i know a lot of guys do yeah it depends on the rattle i played with it fishing. sometimes you put it in there and i think it can get too cluttered inside the bait um and not let the fish get around the hooks uh, one trick i used to always do since i was a kid is i, I buy like little lead bull shot like 164 or something tiny it's just really little tiny lead bull shots and i put like three or four of them in there it'll weight my frog so if especially if i'm throwing it on something that i want like a heavy mat down south or and it still gives it a little bit of noise when you're and you can throw it a lot further um i, I prefer that over like a bulkier rattle let me skip that one okay let me back click on that one um when using a jig in the fall how do you work it drag slow on bottom or hop i can do both I, i'm I'm mostly like shaking and hopping shaking. it but I, i'm flipping it a lot you know docks lay downs grass stuff like that yeah if i'm if i'm dragging something then i'm going to generally assume that i'm throwing it on a hard bottom something then i'm going to roll more of like a football jig style jig if i want to drag it around um fishing a lot of rocks uh but for the most part um uh, shaking it making it look like something that has come over and they pop it what do you use if you ever want a bigger presentation on the fighter jig is it like first trailers go yeah i'm guessing all right i mean you can put a big salty chunk on there or something else if you want a bigger uh presentation on the fighter jig and there's sometimes bass want do want a real big jig you know a lot of times down south especially like pre-spawn a big jig's really good and then that's when I'll go to like an Outcast Tackle RTX jig, but um, I feel like the rest of the year I, I like fishing the a little more compact jig. 
Um, I have caught a lot of bass, but none on a true jig. How does one get to build confidence? I'll tell you this. I remember my buddy, Eric Gass, taught me how to flip a jig um, in the city lakes local, and I did not get it. The first couple, I mean, he's whacking them, and I just didn't get it. I didn't know what was a weed, what was a, now it's second nature. I swear I can even tell that there's a fish there without even actually feeling anything. All you got to do is catch one. Get a couple bites. I'll, 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 I've taught people how to flip jigs. As soon as they figure out what the exact the bite is, it flips like a switch and you almost can't put the thing down. Again, the only way you're going to ever build confidence in any bait that we talk about is by catching a couple fish on it. And just, and some days, you know, there's some days that there's a bait that I just don't quite wrap my head around. The spy bait was one that I just didn't know when and where to throw it. So what I do, I threw just that bait all day. You get confidence really quick if that's your only option that day. Don't go out there. I tell people all the time, don't run the same waypoints every day on the same lake. You fish all the time with the same baits. Switch it up. Constantly look for new fish. Constantly try to learn uh, new baits, new styles, and, and you'll keep excelling in the sport big time. We talked about it. What knot are you using with the flipping uh, from braid to floral? We're both 100% on the FG knot um it's the one it's definitely the one and now i swear i'm as fast as doing that one as i am with the alberto or any of the other ones yeah. uh what's the deepest you'll fish a hair jig it's a good question i i probably should mess with it more out deep but for me it's like 12 to 14. like i want to be able to see the bottom where i'm throwing it for mm -hmm. sure Fit, yeah, again you need that clear water they will come up and eat it you know you don't need to throw it down there in 15. i'm 15 is kind of my cutoff when i when i start looking to other options but again, I might be ta attacking the jig in more like eight, something like that, six, and expecting them to come up and, and eat it when they see it. Again, when those when those flies hatch and stuff, they come from the bottom and they go up. And those fish are very conditioned to coming up and, and getting it. And again, in cold water with the hair jig, it's it just hair and, and cold water just go, go together really, really well. Red, red wine on that hair jig. I did talk about the red wine on the hair jig. It was something I didn't throw until this year. And man, I got some really, really big bites on that red one, uh, especially really early in the season when those, when those again, the bigger female bass do not like the color red in the spring. That's a good question. Can okay. you talk about spinning rod action fast versus slow in regards to casting, detecting bites and fighting fish? Uh, well, now, if, back when we used straight floral all the time, you'd want an extra fast rod, but um, braid really takes the sensitivity to another level, so you can use, I'm not going to call them slow actions, but slower action rods, a um, little more cushion, a little more give, and I think with the braid, you don't really need much sensitivity. Um, northern Minnesota this time of year, are the largest eating gills or craws? Both, both, always. definitely. Up north, fishing's pretty easy. Um, they're always eating gills and crows. Gills, crows, perch, and now you can find on the smallies a little bit of like the uh, tulipy stuff like that. They start getting on a lot of that a little bit more, but for the most part, I do only guide trips for people from out of state. It blows their mind that we don't have shad. And there's so many things we don't have. Our fish eat perch, bluegills, and crawdads. That is the vast majority of what they're eating out there. Uh, when, in your opinion, guys, is the best time for a spook for smallmouth? Uh, I'd say either oh. post spawn when they're cruising, or if you have the right kind of bait fish, if you got Cisco's Tulabee smelt shad stuff like that, uh, spook's really good in the fall. Definitely, um, river, river is going to be really key. Yeah, and I know a lot of people too will throw uh, spooks and stuff like that, small ones, at, when they know that there's a lot of beds on a flat and fish are up there, especially smallmouth. Uh, they'll, a lot of times they'll attack something over the top of their head and at least show you that they're there if they if they just blow it to get it out of their way you know that there's a bass there and you can move up there and helps you move a lot of water i don't know a lot of times i think it's more for looking i'm getting that one uh will this seminar be recorded and put online absolutely you can go on my youtube page josh douglas fishing all these are always on there or my website joshdouglasfishing.com uh, we have it all separated up there uh for smallies what's your favorite soft plastic for the back of a wobble head uh man there's a lot of them actually i like the vile craw is a, is a really good one i will tell everyone i caught my personal best smallie on a wobble head uh it was awesome um i was just using a vile craw 
some of the bottom. I think the biffle bug is a good one. Yeah. I mean, Tom even venom that bait for that. Uh, pretty cool, sweet. A lot of times, you know, a lot, I see a lot of people drag it. I just reel the thing like it's a crankbait right on the bottom. Dun, dun, dun. I'm feeling rocks. I'm using it to search. If I don't feel nothing, I slow down, start moving it again, and it just picks up big, big bites uh, out there. But there is, you, you can play with that. I've put in, I've put in the uh, Exo Swim, a four inch swim bait on there. Anything, you know, you're just moving it, you're moving it through the rocks, and uh, uh, those hard heads get bites, man. They pick up, you can move fit, and you can move water with them, and they come through most almost yeah, everything. Yeah. Awesome as always. Thanks, dude. Watching from Champlain. Awesome. Nice. What's your favorite bait for flipping bass in clear water? Um, if they're in cover, a jig will still work good, but um, back to that tube, just a green pumpkin, no nothing tube, like. As far as like clear water large mouths goes pretty hard to beat. Um, definitely I'm I'm with him. Things that don't, you know, kind of look a little bit more natural to him in the water. Natural colors, I think, is most important when you start getting with that clear water. Um, how do you decide your drop shot plastic and presentation? Wacky versus nose. That's a good question. Mine is a lot of times wacky is when I'm vertically dropping on right on something. I want to let it sit there and let that thing do its natural. Generally, I'm not casting a wacky rig too much. Then I'm going to be looking more a uh, little paddle tail, something that I can move and drag through, uh, something simple like a plasma tail or a robo worm, something like that. You can do both with. Um, yeah, for me, it's basically on the bait choice. If I'm going to use a stick worm, I'm going to wacky rig it. If I'm going to use a little swim bait, I'm going to. You cast the really, wacky much? Yeah. You do? I don't really uh, nose hook per se, but in line, anyways, I'll, I'll no. thread them on. Um, yeah, basically it depends on bait. How does the time of day, morning, midday, and evening affect what you use and how you fish it? Does time of day have more of an impact during spring and fall? Well, to answer the back part, yeah, I think it does. Um, you know, I think in spring and fall, you generally have colder water. And so your afternoon hours are going to be a lot of your best. I've seen that from Florida all the way to Minnesota. It don't matter. It's your warmer water. It's when things are happening. The sun's it's the warmest part of the day. Generally, like this time of year, if I don't know, I go grouse hunt or duck hunt in the morning and then go bass fishing in the afternoon. Um, cold water things just you know, in the morning. I think you can always pick up some bites. There's, no a, what. there's no, always a morning. There, the bite. first half hour of light, there's always a bite, whether it's in December or July. It doesn't matter. That's just prime feeding opportunity um full moons too a very important morning night bite you know as close as you can get to that full moon a lot of times fish are eating at night when when there's a full moon what was the we cover that what's it we cover everything yeah how does time of day i think so um i am new to drop shot fishing and have not had any luck with it on douglas lake in tennessee have any pointer suggestions I think if I threw a drop shot much on Douglas Lake, they'll bite it. I know that. Um, again, I think it's just a confidence thing of throwing it. A drop shot was one of those that I didn't really get right away. Just anything you haven't done, you're not going to, it's going to take a little bit of confidence to get it down. But uh, again, a drop shot should be on everybody's deck every single day that they're, that they're out there bass fishing. So Douglas Lake is like any other. It's got pretty clear water. The, they're definitely drop shot eaters there. But again, let me say one thing about Douglas Lake. Douglas Lake is darn near a, a tva lake it's very close to tennessee river valley those fish eat big gizzard shad they love big stuff so maybe go to like a bigger cinco um something just a little bit bigger to try to entice them them bigger bites on the drop shot well, that giveaways what's that uh That's no sorry guys no else. we'll we'll next seth and i's next webinar we'll, we'll announce but you if you win you're gonna know before that oh, in the next day or two We'll pick the winners. We'll notify you. You'll have it long before our next webinar. Um, but no, definitely, we just we'll, we'll announce it at our, our next webinar. Which one? This one? Yeah. There you go. What is a good water temp to start throwing a blade bait? When, when would you throw it? Forty-eight is my under yeah, fifty. Under for fifty. Sure. Under fifty is a good number on the blade bait. Four, Forty to fifty is about the best. I try to force it, and I just catch walleyes. I can't see very good, so I like that vibration in the water. You'll catch it on that. I think you catch them year-round on it, but smallies definitely when the when the water temp and largemouth when the water temp dips below fifty. Um. 
Um, question is, guy fish is in really clear water. Would you still throw floral braid with your spinning applications? Definitely. Uh, you're going to get more casting distance out of the braid. I'll just, I'll fish a lot of like really long leaders on my spinning rods just because they go through the reel so easy. Well, that FG a lot of time, is important I'll, for that though. A lot of times I'll fish a 20 foot plus a liter. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't worry about the water clarity. <laughs> Where do you want to go with this? I don't know. Um, uh, what color blade bait are best this time of year? I like the anything chromey, anything metally, um, little little bit of purple or pink or something like that, and it would be good with me. Um, definitely like that more of a natural bait fish. Bait fish color. I've never really tried a crawdad one. That might that might play. I, I just never really tried it much. I think that there. flash has a lot to do with the reaction, I definitely but think so. it seems like silver is the best color to throw. Uh, uh, what conditions are you looking to throw a drop shot for large mouse? Almost every condition just gets more bites. You know, I might have a one choice, might go down a weed line, flipping a jig, flipping a jig, seeing if they're there. If all of a sudden I'm not getting bites inside the weed line like I should, maybe I'm going to bump out to the edge, start throwing a drop shot down it. Uh, points, rock points. And uh, one where it's really good is when you idle a point, you got a rock spine coming off, you got a milfoil or coontail, and you see bluegills. You see a lot of bait sitting on it. Um, they're sitting off of it because what's trying to eat them is sitting off of that edge and on them rocks and you can throw that drop shot on the edge and, and just you're going to pick up bites like I said you're going to catch small ones you're going to catch big ones but you're definitely going to get those bites um, one for you. So, oh, here. how do you work your tubes slow drag or stroke and hop uh, I'm I'm more of a dragger. I, I give it a lot of action, but I don't move the bait all that much. I like to hop the line. Uh, that's a big one. I see a lot of people drop shot and everything, especially I spend a lot of time guiding. Uh, they move the bait a lot instead of just moving the line some to give the bait some action. I'm just trying to get it in there. If every now and then, if I'm not getting a bite and I feel like I should, I might start ripping the bait around a little bit and try to entice entice a bite. But I, generally, this is what I tell people. I hand them a tube and I said, make it, make it be a crawdad. What do you think a crawdad's doing on the bottom? Do that with your with your tube. Yeah, on here, uh, on jerk baits, is there a temp you prefer slow versus a fast retrieve? Um, the basically the temp's going to determine everything. The colder it is, you know, high 30s, low 40s, you're barely going to move it. Check an email in between uh, jerks. Yeah, you know, mid 40s up to 50, you can fish it fairly paced, and you know, after that, another thing we didn't talk about. Um, like post spawn largemouth fishing, it's been kind of a secret for the last couple of years. It's it's probably one of the best post spawn baits there is. I've seen a, a lot of fish get caught on at that time of year. It's kind of when everybody starts putting it down. Good but, shad spawner too. Yep. Shad spawn bait. Uh, one thing I want to talk about about the different jerk bait options. Um, I've used I like the shadow wrap a lot. I like the idle vision mega bass idle vision jerk bait. Come summertime though. Um, when the water gets warm, I like like an X wrap, something that goes instead of like points and stops, something that has a real erratic action. I can get that bait to bounce really hard left to right, and you'll pull a whole school of smallmouth and stuff away to chase that down. And you can get away some of those brighter colors too, a lot like what I'm doing with the spinner bait. I might throw an all pink one or an all chartreuse, something bright that just gets their attention on the reef. And sometimes you're sitting there watching, and you're watching like four or five missiles come up right behind it, and it's just a matter of uh, waiting for them to bite it. A lot of people ask them about the stupid tube. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, Take like two or three. When more. is the right time to fish a Nico rig and what's the best rod and reel setup? You don't really talk about the Nico much. No. Um, killer bed bait. Uh, like super pressure. Like anytime fish are tough to catch. I like it in the summer a lot too. And they're grouped up. Spot a bass killer for sure. When the water gets into the 40s in northern Minnesota, what do you think is the most effective bait for largemouth? Hmm. 40s is tough. Oh, to for smallmouth fishing. Yeah, the blade bait or go hunting. The blade yeah. bait will work. Um, a jig. Uh, you, yeah. you can never go wrong with the jig or a tube. Those baits you can, can catch slow roll a swim jig and still get bit. But a lot of time, jerk yeah. bait, real, jerk bait. real slow. But 
honestly, once the water's in the 40s, I'd, I'd much rather smallmouth fish than largemouth fish. Tough fishing for sure. For sure. We just went through our go to, oh, go to baits. Just pick one more good one. Okay, we're gonna, we'll take two more. Two more, then we're going to go offline and we're done with this one. Uh, here's one fishing in Florida is so different from the rest of the country. I agree, a 50 pound man. What makes your decision from an eight carrier braid from a four carrier? I'm all eight. Quiet. Just, quiet, cast better, smoother. Uh, Probably better knot strength too. Everything um, in Florida is quiet. It has to be. Those fish live yeah. shallow. They're not that dumb. You know, uh, they a deer knows what's going on around it. So does a bass. Okay, they, their job is to eat and stay alive and not get eaten. And in Florida, these fish are always shallow, so they don't get the option of going deep for most of the year and then coming up shallow and being a little bit dumber like they can here. These fish are always shallow, so they are stealthy. The first time I went to Florida, a lot of guys hate Florida when they get there. It's too much vegetation, too much shallow stuff. But again, I think the biggest thing is it's one of my favorite places to fish, but you have to be like stealthy, quiet, and every. A lot of guys will just push, pull around, won't even touch the trolling motor. You just got to be quiet. Is that your last one? I don't know. I'm a lot of them are just like. Can I find a good one? Yeah. Let's see one. Um, yeah, hit this one right here. Right here? Yeah. You want to go on there? Yeah. They're okay. asking, is Malax Lake pressure affecting the fish the last three years? Of course it is, but it doesn't take near the pressure that other lakes across the country get. Guys at Lake Gunnersville will have absolutely zero sympathy for the amount of pressure Lake Malax takes. Um, but I will tell you something. Yeah, they get conditioned to the same stuff. Just give them something that they haven't seen. Do something a little bit different. And they will, they're, they're there, they're very much there. The lake is alive, better, as good as it can be. And uh, I mean, you, you look in there in the spring when they're moving up shallow, you'll see them by the thousands. They're, they're very alive and well, but they're getting educated. They're getting smart. You know, you gotta switch up your presentations. You, you have to try different things that these fish aren't seeing and, and you'll, end up, you'll end up having some of the best days you could possibly imagine. We good? Yeah. We gonna go offline? Yep. All right, See guys. You. Thanks for joining. We appreciate you guys all coming out. Let me figure out how I do that. Breezy. We'll go 